Hey guys, how's it going? Edit here again, and in today's video, we are going to be checking out the Hartung Game Master. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure many of you have heard of this. Um, this was a console that was released uh, around the time that the Game Boy was coming out, a little bit time after that. And if you're a fan of this channel and you've been watching for a while, you'll know that I've kind of gone through and um, made videos on all of the different knockoff consoles that came out, apart from a couple. Uh, one of them is called the Game Plus, and if you guys have seen that, then um, definitely let me know. And then there's another one as well, um, and I can't even remember the name of it, but it's stupidly obscure. I'll put a picture of it up now. Um, and that was more of like an absolute clone. This is actually an individual thing. And by individual thing, I mean it had its own games. Um, it didn't kind of emulate or, or literally it wasn't like a hardware clone of the Game Boy. It had its own games library. And we'll be taking a look at some of the games um, during the course of this video, although I haven't got many. Um, but we'll uh, just have a look at a couple of different units first and talk about the history for a couple of minutes. Um, so by history, I don't know a lot about the history, but um, what I can tell you is that this thing was re literally released under so many different names by so many different companies. I've actually got a couple of different ones here. I've got the Super Game and the Gametronic. Gametronic was actually a company in itself, so they released this and just called it uh, Gametronic. But other than that, there is literally no like logos or anything on it. Um, so you kind of the only thing that changes is really the color scheme in this. There was also one called the Systema 2000, which I believe was the uh, the UK release um, of this thing. Um, and then there was, a, there was quite a few different ones. I did find an eBay listing of this guy who was selling loads and loads of different ones. Um, I'll put a picture of that up on the, uh, the screen if I can find it. Um, he was selling so many, but he just wanted so much money for them. And, you know, they're really not worth that much. They're not very rare. Um, I've actually got three of these units here. Um, I picked up one of them for like five pounds. One of them, the first one I got, I paid a bit more for because I didn't realize that they were going to be so common. And then one of them came in a lot for about 40 pounds with um, two, two of these consoles. Um, in terms of the actual uh, kind of look of it, you'd, you'd kind of suspect it might be a clone of the Game Gear or a knockoff of the Game Gear um, because back in the time this came out, in fact, I'm not too sure which one came out after it, but um, I believe this was probably released around the same time as this. And there wasn't many things in this orientation yet. Um, you know, we had the Sega Nomad uh, and a couple of the Game & Watches and stuff. But other than that, so you, you might think this could have been a potential knockoff of that. But it's not. It's definitely a, it's definitely a knockoff kind of attempting to, to kind of join into the Game Boy market. So in that sense, it's not a knockoff, but it's more of a... Um, you know, a competitor, shall we say, although it really wasn't a competitor because of how unsuccessful it was. In terms of size, it is pretty much the same size as a DMG Game Boy, um, if, if you look at it on the portrait mode. Um, and then, uh, yeah, let's just get rid of the elephant in the room by talking about what the bloody hell this is. This D-pad, okay, whoever came up with that idea is absolutely absurd. Ergonomically, it, it is comfortable if you, hold, if you have relatively big hands and you hold it like that but at the same time my thumb is having to really like right angle stretch just to press these buttons um, and then you, the more you hold it down like this the more unstable it is so you probably end up dropping it but what a weird design it would have been so much nicer having the buttons up here what a weird weird design I'm really not too sure why they've gone through that and these start and select buttons are like little pins that dig into your uh, dig into your thumb so quite strange on the top, we've got a power button. On the back is where the games go. Um, this one's missing the battery cartridge. I've got plenty with the battery cartridge. I just thought, you know, this one's probably had a hard life. Let's just get a little bit more life out of it. Someone obviously forgot that this was the off switch or something, and so wrote off on it. On the bottom, we have the contrast, the DC um, in for power. I actually have was going to use a DC in for this because my batteries are running low, which is a point we'll turn about, talk about in a minute but it's um, center negative, and I don't have any of those. A headphone jack and volume. So let's talk about why uh, this thing is really, really quite terrible. First of all, before we get into the games, one thing that I don't know how they've managed to do is when the batteries get low, the screens get dimmer. The screen gets dimmer. Like, okay, why? Why didn't they, like... I know that there's a way that you can you know, have it so that the, the batteries will just output as for as long as they can, keeping the, the console at the same you know, volume, same, um, everything's internally working the same. I don't really don't know the technical details of it, but instead of which, as the batteries get uh, lower and lower on power, 
this thing um, you know outputs less and less of an image until you have to replace the batteries which is just so 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 strange um, but I guess it's just a you know one of the, the things about this being so cheap okay let's let's have a look at some games so this thing was shipped with a uh, falling block which as you can probably imagine is Tetris um, and we'll have a look at one of these in a minute um, they've come in different colors that's just because these consoles were released in different colors and they released them with those games. Don't know why, but they did. It's quite cool, I guess. Um, so there's Falling Block, and then I've, other than that, I've got three other games. So there's Space Castle, which is apparently quite a good game. Soccer, which is, I imagine, going to be the, the hardest thing ever. And um, Car Racing. And if I just zoom the camera in slightly, we'll have a look at some of the artwork on this thing. It's um, it's relatively interesting artwork. The Watara Supervision also had um, extremely awful artwork. Um, by the way, these games are not cross compatible um, at all. Even though they might have like a similar pin out and stuff, and they basically look the same, they do not work with each other in each other's in different consoles and stuff. So, unfortunately, if you were thinking that, which I don't imagine any of you were, it doesn't work. So yeah, this is quite interesting. They've got this proper blocky. Um, car here and then everything else is like smooth so I don't know why soccer one's actually not too bad it looks like we've got a bit of shadows going on and you can see the crowd in the back they've even used the little um, the little football as the O on this you had funny names like Christ ball um, I guess it was meant to be like crystal ball but they just went for Christ ball couldn't fit the whole thing on there um, space castle is just super basic it's literally just like a space a bit of space, a bit of sky, a bit of some stars, and then the words Space Castle in text that you can get on freetext.com. And then Falling Block is just Tetris, really, isn't it? It's just really, really Tetris. And there's nothing else on here. The pins are absolutely exposed. They wobble inside. It's not the best build quality, but... Okay, let's have a look at the, uh, the actual games in action. In fact, I'm going to keep the screen zoomed in. Okay, so let's pop a game in the back here. We'll have a look at Falling Block first because it's the, the kind of most common one. And this thing doesn't work, by the way, without a game in it. So if you buy it and it's broken, make sure you have a game or clean the contacts and I'm sure it'll be fine. Okay, so here's Falling Block. Now, one of these, the volume doesn't work. So we're going to have to work out which one that is. But let's just have a go. So press start. Okay, I think this is the one with the volume doesn't work. Oh, no. Okay, here we go. Although we probably don't want the volume on because it's quite bad. Okay, so this is quite a strange thing. When you press down, you can't... Oh, no, wait. I don't know. Is it this one? Oh, yeah, no. When you press B, it just drops straight down. You can't move it. So, you know, in uh, the actual Tetris, you can, um, you know, kind of press down and then it goes speeds up and goes a bit quicker. You can't do that in this. You just have to kind of find out where you want it and then um, press B and it drops. So uh, yeah, it's it's not a bad game of Tetris. You can see there's some weird stuff going on with the screen. That's because I'm having to kind of slightly angle it. Um, but it's also because the screens do do that. Old LCD screens have a tendency to do that. Um, if you haven't worked out by now, the the music is very painful. So we're going to turn that down because I don't want to have to listen to more of that. But yeah, it's it's a game of Tetris, isn't it? it you can see that how um, pixely the screen the screen is. Um, compared to the Game Boy, it's really like basic. The uh, the Game Plus, if you guys have heard of that, is really really similar to this um, in terms of the uh, you know the screen resolution. I don't know what the specific screen res. I can tell you that it looks bad when I look at it. Um, but yeah, that is Falling Blocks. Let's try a slightly more exciting one. Let's try Space Castle. Um, I think that's probably going to be the only good one, to be honest. Um, if this if this is even is going to be good. Um, now, Ashens did a video on this, and he said this is kind of like a boss rush um, game, and I haven't actually tried it out yet, but I imagine it's probably probably what it is. Um, oh, I died. I seem to be moving, moving really, really smoothly at the bottom, which is quite nice. I don't know what we're meant to be shooting. Oh, it is actually, you're, meant to be sh you're shooting pixel by pixel that castle, and then dodging the bullets at the bottom. This is really hard to do, by the way, through the, through the viewfinder. And I imagine in real life anyway, because of the, uh, the kind of ghosting. In fact, speaking of ghosting, there's not a lot. You can definitely tell that there is some. But it's not like, it's not too bad, really. This thing seems to be firing like a big laser at the bottom and then little mini lasers on the side. Which are really, really, really hard to dodge and literally seem to be appearing from everywhere. 
But yeah, it seems like a relatively fun game. Something you'd probably find at like an arcade or something. But uh, yeah, okay, so that is Space Castle. Let's try um, soccer quickly because this is probably going to be horrendous. Um, I The thing with soccer on these old consoles is um, three on three soccer. That's probably because they can't have more than three people in the screen at the same time. Um, the the thing about soccer on consoles it, like this, you just, there's there's no real way to tell what is going on or who you are, where the ball. I mean, this person, the second I move, is moving with me. So wh which way are we even going? I imagine it's got to be this way. Oh, I stopped them from scoring. <laughs> oh my god. It's actually not too bad. If you knew if you know what's going on. Tackle him. Yes, we stopped the ball. Okay, have we got it? No. Oh my god, what is going on? I don't know who I am. Oh, they scored! Okay, I don't know what was going on there, but that doesn't help that I know absolutely nothing about football. Okay, and then lastly, let's have a look at car racing, which I imagine is going to be uh, not too bad, to be honest. Um, okay, yeah, this is what I was saying by the game has to be in for it to work. Super Australia. Shout out to my Australian viewers. Come on. Let's just get this over with. Okay, so we've got some sort of uh, some sort of a city in the background. How do I Oh there we go, press A to get moving. Oh I went into the side. Oh I overtook someone I think. Or are they coming up behind me? I don't know. Oh my lord, this is very difficult. Overtake him. Go on. Go on. Go on. Oh. Oh, we crashed into each other. Can I claim that in my insurance? Okay, it looks pretty boring, to be honest. Um, if, you, if you like difficult car racing games, but difficult not for the fact that they're good then uh, this is probably the console for you. So, what do I say? I've been wanting to make this video for a long time um, because of just how you know obscure this is and how weird it is. And uh, I haven't done a retro handheld extravaganza in a very, very long time. Um, in terms of kind of a score, I would say it's probably like a 4 out of 10, if 10 being the Game Boy and 1 being um, a pop station or a, you know, Pound World LCD game. It's not bad, but it's certainly not good. Um, you can definitely tell uh, why this didn't do very well in the market. I don't know how much these were new, but I imagine if you spend an extra twenty pounds, you know, you could have gotten the Game Boy. Uh, the games are all pretty horrendous. Uh, I mean, you know, I don't think that the Falling Block is a bad version of Tetris, but once you got used to the dynamic of not having, um, you know, to be able to move it down quicker and having such awful audio that it makes your ears bleed, then it's probably not that bad. Space Castle is probably good if you're good at those kind of arcade games where you're having to move around and dodge bullets. Soccer is probably good if you... Well, I don't know about that one. And uh, yeah, there's nothing to say about car racing. Okay, well, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. And I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.